up so I can, if you're going to ask a question or whatever. No I, problem. I could do that all day. Sound off. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Good morning, guys. How are you doing today? Good. Good. All right. Goodness. So, how are you enjoying the Chicago show? I'm really nice. Thank you guys for coming. I'm glad you guys are making it. Um, so, we're here today with War Dogs. This will be our charity for this year. Um, how about we start around, walk around, and get each other's names? What you guys did for the military? Okay. Uh, my name is DeAndre Baldwin. Here, hold on. Let's yeah. pass this around. Okay. Uh, my name is DeAndre Baldwin, a senior Army veteran, uh, 14 Mike 25 uniform. Just here trying to get it together, enjoy my time with other veterans. My name is Ralph Matson, Viet, Viet, Ralph Matson, Vietnam era veteran. I've been in War Dogs uh, 13 years, and uh, I'm the veteran representative that does all the interviews. My name's Nick. I'm one of the newer guys to War Dogs. Um, in the Army, I was a combat medic. Um, I served four years, Iraq, um, and that's about it. My name is Helen. This is Tilly. Tilly's a war dog. Um, I'm an Army veteran from the Vietnam era. Hi, my name is James Fallick. I'm a Air For former Air Force, and uh, I'm happy to have the war dog. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. Hi, I'm Bruce Harris. <laughs> I'm the president of War Dogs Making It Home. Um, we're proud to be uh, chosen as uh, the charity for 2024 for Illinois Camaro. I'm a member of the club as well, and it's been uh, a real, really good time for the vets to come down here with their dogs and to uh, be seen and experience this this great event and, and also to um, work with Illinois Camaro. Thank you very much, and have a great day. Yeah, why don't we tell you real quick, how about you uh, tell us a little bit about the program and what the charity and what's the process for, because you were telling me earlier about it's like a two-year commitment. Uh, yes. All right. So uh, we uh, provide a, um, a rescued dog to our veterans that, are, 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 that have PTSD, TBI, or MST diagnoses from the Veterans Administration. Um, once they are accepted into our program, we match them with a dog. It's a two-year program, a two-year commitment by the vet that they have to come in twice a week in the first year, once a week for the second year. And when they graduate, they take their dog home. Um, we provide all the training and medical care and even discounts on food so that the vets have as little expense as possible in maintaining their dogs. Should their dog pass on while they're um, while they have it, we will do our best to get them another dog and train that dog as well. Um, this is something that we've been doing for about 11 years, since 2011. Um, we have graduated 70, how many vets? 70, 75, something like that? 75 vets. 74 vets. Wow. Uh, we have not lost one vet to suicide which is why we do this. Um, so basically we're saving two lives at a time, the vet and the dog, mm -hmm. because the dogs are all rescues. They are not, they're not uh, chosen, they are selected. So that's it. Well, thank you. Um, I would have to say this, I know how important it is for to have a companion. I don't have PTSD, but I do experience some anxiety and depression. And I rescued mine uh, on Fort Carson, Colorado. And it's just been a world changing. I know exactly what it feels like to have nobody there and having somebody that's consistently like, you're, like I said, it's saving two lives. You know, we have a longer lifespan. You know, when they say, it's like, oh, we're that dog's life. No, th we are their whole life. We are their whole lives. You know, you can't, it's something that it's very serious, you know. Um, if you guys don't mind sharing, how has your companion helped you out? And what's the name of your dog? Uh, 
Uh, my service dog's name is Rachel. Um, she's helped me out a great deal uh, in the two years that I've been uh, paired with her. Uh, I probably wouldn't be in a place like this with this many people uh, without her, because uh, I used to isolate a lot um, mm -hmm. at home and not really go out too much, but she's really helped me out with that and uh, the anxiety that I feel when I'm in spaces like this. But I mean, she's helped me. I'm here right now. Yeah. I probably wouldn't even be doing You're doing great. Without, without her. So I wouldn't even be able to tell. So, like, pass on to the next one. Next up. Hi, my name is Ralph. My service dog's name is Shaggy, and she's my third service dog. Wow. I had two other ones that have passed away. Sorry. Um, back in February of 2012 is when I got into the program, and I could never make the phone call to Alana. Which was pretty hard for me to do, so I wrote her a letter. I still have the letter at home. And when she gave me that phone call telling me that she was going to get me in as soon as possible and help me, that was the best thing that I, I ever did because it's it's not easy for veterans to take that step. No, it's not. Uh, to, um, to, uh, you know, take the responsibility of a dog and bond with that animal yep. and help you heal enough to where you can manage yourself to get out in public like we do. Yep. Yeah, it still bo it bothers me, but mm -hmm. not as much. She keeps me even keel. Yeah, it makes you feel safe. Yeah, it makes you feel safe, exactly. And you know, these are. This organization is some something that Chicago should know about. They knew about us a long time ago, um, back in 2012. When um, I forget the governor's name at the time, but mm -hmm. he recognized us as a as the best service dog organiz training organization in the state of Illinois, and. Uh, that's something that's really, uh, really nice to see. And, uh, you know, you could tell how, how our dogs all work for us. Uh, you have one, you have two of them, three of them here laying down. And they're just <laughs> taking in the time and yeah. they're still paying attention. My dog, they're she's working. always close yeah. to me, always close to me, even at home. And Tilly's the same way. She's, yeah, she's all over her. <laughs> she's all over her too. So, you know, we've, plus we got a special bond, you know, right. brothers and sisters mm -hmm. of veterans, you know, we're, we're all a special bond. So when I do these interviews that take about an hour and a half, mm -hmm. I help the guy, the men and the women get through the process. And over time, you know, you, you can, share some of your own. I've shared a lot of my experiences with them, mm -hmm. and especially in other areas I'm not going to get into. No, of course but, not. Uh, don't have to. You know, I think, um, I think in the long run, uh, one of Chicago's own people, two people, is uh, Bruce over here. And uh, who's our president, and Alana, who's vice president for training. Both of them, I think, Chicago should know about them because they make them, they make Chicago proud. And that's great. I, I'm happy to hear that. I, the work that you do is fantastic. And I, it does need to be out more. I, and I think a sort of should be for everybody. Yeah, it's, you know, Every day, every day, it's just, it's not like you were saying, it's hard to pick up that phone. Um, you did it twice. Um, I mean, it was, it's, it was hard for me because I, I had to go through that phone call. Um, I was going through a lot of stuff at the time between friends, family, and then work as well. I, I was an MP for 10 and a half years. Prior to that was also a truck driver for the Army. Um, 
last couple of years was really challenging. I had to reach, it's hard to pick up that phone call. We all have, most of us have the black face bracelets. We all know somebody who's unfortunately not here with us. Um, a lot of, it, it's kind of gets, it kind of gets overlooked. And a lot of people don't think about it. They go about their day. Some of them, it's not just, it's not ignorance. It's just, they don't think about it. They didn't experience it. They don't have anybody in the military for it. But it's something that needs to be out there more. It needs to be more aware. Um, especially each state or even the government, you know, they should get more involved for vets. Um, taking that phone call and that first step is hard. It's really hard. I have, a, I have two people I communicate every day with. We always talk to each other. Uh, one is a veteran of 22 years. He just got out, done a couple of tours, and then another one was my old platoon sergeant. Um, he, we all talk every day, do a little gaming, but we always make sure to check up on each other. And I still reach out to my old, we may not talk much, but I, I pick up the phone at least once a month, I'm like, hey, how are you guys doing? I see, him, I see you posting on Facebook, cool, I know you're doing great. If I don't see that activity, I know I need to check up on you. And the time is going up. Seconds. Yep, it so keeps climbing. Back exactly. Back yeah. Exactly. I've, I've, I've been blessed. I've been blessed in this program, literally, because it saved my life. And uh, I can say, I haven't. What may, where my gratitude comes in, where I feel good, is when I see. And I'll use it. My veterans mm -hmm. that I've interviewed, them, their dog, their new service dog, and them get vested. They earned their vest together from bonding and everything, and training well together, and going home. It's kind of like their own basic training that they go right. through together. And that's what makes Absolutely. me feel good seeing them do that. I don't ask for thanks for my job from the people that 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 I help. It just makes me feel good seeing another name go up on that board yeah. saying, hey, I did that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. like that, that's the best gratification you could have. Yes, it is. It's not a thank you. Seeing that that change, that that moment, and seeing that reaction during graduation, and the, and not so much the how happy the canine uh, the can can is, but the relief of that veteran, of that face, like having somebody there. Yeah. That is so gratifying. And what, what else? What's funny is, is like Alana told me the first after I had my first service dog. She said, "You know, I've seen two changes in you." I said, "What's that?" She says, "One, you got a smile on your face, yep. and two, you're you're allowing me to help you." And know, and from that time on, that's the way it's been. That's, uh, they said that to me as well as I got my dog, Stella. That's She's not right. a service animal yet, but I eventually want to go through the program and get her trained. But um, no, everybody said you're more human. You you are more relaxed. You can laugh. You can put a smile on your face. It's like you don't have that. You come home every day. Well, for me, it's just, I can't take her to work. I can come home every day, literally right there. She hears my dog, my car come in right there at the door. Like everybody could be all around giving her loves. The minute she knows my car, she goes right to the door. And that is the best feeling of all. What about you, sir? My name's Nick. Um, Sully's my service dog. Um, I, I wouldn't even be here if, if it weren't for him. And I've only had, had him, I don't know what, going on five months now or six months ish. But, um, and I mean, I. I I would, I'd still be at home, sitting, sitting in my house, isolating myself, and probably, you know, just doing something I shouldn't. But now that I've got him, I'm able to bring my kid out to the car show and try, try and experience a few things. And mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a really good program. Um, and it's, it's the camaraderie that we, that we get to fall back into is something that we all miss leaving the service. Yeah. I mean, you, you miss exactly. having that brotherhood, knowing that the person. Yep person in front of you and the person behind you has got your back no matter what oh yeah I mean, we all look out for each other and we yep. all kind of it's kind of like a, a big family i guess extended yep. family exactly right. that's all about the military no matter what you go through that process i tell my pay if you may not make it through maps but you still took that step and 
it doesn't matter where you're at in the world, if you're a veteran and you're in need, right there. They're it's right there. Phone the number, a meal, have a drink with somebody, <clears throat> they're right there. It doesn't matter where you came from. If you're a if you're a service member or a vet, it doesn't matter. You can go anywhere and you run into that. I felt I was disconnected when I came out, it was adjusting. Nobody gets our humor. We have some, we got some dark humor. You know, let's be real here. <laughs> okay, we got some, you know, it's too, it's not a, I want to say it's not an easy job, but it's also not a, you know, it's definitely a hard job, especially with all the stuff we deal with on a daily basis. Navy SEALs the only easy day was yesterday. Yep. And you know what they do? The first thing they do in the morning, make your bed. But it, it's funny, it's like, that's how we get along. And I felt, I had a, the gentleman for the media team here uh, introduced me to the VFW. He, he lost his uh, uncle to um, a couple months ago, and I went to the VFW hall. I felt connected by just being around, and and I eventually I went into the VFW, got in there, and it's something. The vet TV. One of the things I was looking to vet TV. You see the advertisement, and it's true. It helps, and um, it's that, that's one uh, thing. Funny thing about brother, uh, the brotherhood. It's something that cannot be replaced. Absolutely, it's stuck with you. And I came home to visit one day, and a guy said, "Thank you for my ser- thank you for your service." I'm like, "How did you know?" He's like, "The way you walk, the way you present yourself, it sticks with you. It doesn't matter if you're 18, 17, or 105. It's gonna stick with you." It does. We got it in the, in this real world. We got it all right. The people outside here. We're still learning to keep, to keep yeah. up with the world, you know, because we've been there and done that. Right. You know, if you haven't been there and done that, keep your mouth shut. Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's, yep. That's what it comes down to. As you were saying, sir? As you were saying? Uh, got me. Oh, you got that? <laughs> we got a couple more members there. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Just what your dog's name was. Oh. This is Tilly. Aww. Tilly is saying <laughs> she's my. You need uh, another chair, sir? Want to come sit here? Would you like to come here? Would you like to sit down? My apologies, miss. Yeah. Oh, you just want to. Oh, getting a photograph. Okay. <laughs> as you were saying? Uh, I was saying this is Tilly. That's Tilly? Uh Uh-huh. And so I have, sometimes I have extreme anxiety and panic attacks. And all I have to do is look at her and she calmed me down. And people don't know, you know, people will look at you. They don't know what you're feeling inside, but your dog knows Mm -hmm. what you're feeling inside. And that's why she's jumping on me now because she yeah, knows I was, that I, I need, was seeing that over there. <laughs> she knows I need some support right now. So I'm really grateful to War Dogs and to Tilly for coming into my life. It's funny, it's like how she knows. It's like most people just see it as a household pet and something. We really don't deserve animals because they are they are amazing, and they people think oh they don't understand. Oh, trust me, they understand, especially the ones that were left abandoned, that were rescued. They understand. They, they can read it over you. They, they, they kind of like, I think they're more, they can read a person more than we, we can read other people, you know. The longer you spend with your animal, the more connected you can be. Yep. Exactly. Just like the Brotherhood. It's the same thing. Um, I am James Alec. My. Wednesday is her name, and she's my dog for more dogs. And Dre over there is the one who got me. I met him at Hard Rock Cafe, and he had Rachel there. And I asked him about it, how he did it and stuff. And she was so good, and he, he said, oh, let me tell you. And he told me all about it. And then I got into the program mm-hmm. and, uh, with Ralph's help and Elena's, and then I'm, I'm here now. I got I got a brain injury, I think I said that, and a hearing loss. So I, I uh, 
sometimes when I'm outside I would get lost. She knows on the train, L train, coming back home. She knows we get off at the Thorndale stop. I don't know how. She's laying down until mm-hmm. after, you know, and then uh, she's jumped on me when when I was sleeping when my heart went below 50 beats a minute. My, she was the head of the watch that they got. So she's fast. And uh, when I had dreams, she's there. She's my best friend. I love her. And I really love all the people with the, the thing because they help so much, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, the best thing happening, I can't think forever. Lifesaver. Yeah, she's the best. Yeah. I didn't hear that. Did you get it's that? a lifesaver, and he was yeah. saying it makes the uh, yeah. difference in the lives. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, she is. She's great. So, I don't know. Did you have any, anything you wanted to ask her? About her? Oh, she's named after the Netflix show. She's named as what? She's named after the Netflix show called Wednesday. The oh, like Wednesday Netflix. Adams. Because, yeah, because she has a white chest and she looks like a school year. I could see that. They said, yeah. So I, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. So can't wait to see the show. Beautiful dog. <laughs> She's good. Right, Wednesday? May looks like a little sleepy. <laughs> yeah. But I noticed when you guys were walking in, like... They are right on your side. And it's, yep. They they know, and it. And most of the oh, the reason they don't want to pet or you can't pet is because they actually work. They're always, you know, they may just be relaxed, but they're always they're looking. Their senses are always elevated, and uh, it's, it's like I said, animals are like they're the greatest thing for a vet. But um, did you want to say something to close off before we close off, sir, about um, your presidents? <laughs> oh, for really? Okay. That's why I thought it was. I was like, I He's always tooting my horn. <laughs> He's always tooting my horn. I like <laughs> yeah. that guy. But uh, seriously. Oh, serious. I, I, I didn't get to serve. Mm-hmm. Too young for Vietnam. Too old for Iraq. Um, but this is my way of giving back to the vets and thanking them for our service. Um, for their service rather. And, uh, you know, it's something that's very important uh, because we all know that a lot of vets commit suicide, unfortunately, 22 a day. Yep. If we can put a little bit of dent in that, that's great. Um, Even if it's one. One. One is That's all we need is one. One. One improvement. That's it. One improvement. That's very true. Something that um, I was recruited into came kicking and screaming and now I support it a hundred percent. Um, these guys and gals are, are very, are, are part of a long line of, of graduates with, with vets and rescued dogs. And, um, <laughs> we just want to keep doing the good work and we appreciate Illinois Camaro sponsorship and, and helping us do that. Um, it costs roughly about $10,000 a dog for wow. a program, roughly around that area. Um, anything we can do to help? Oh, help right, that exactly. Cost is great. I'm. I would say I'm happy to be part of this. Um, sitting with Illinois Camaro, Illinois Camaro. I came out. I I met one of the members, and I wanted to be part of something. It's like okay, when I came out, I wanted to do something. Not only because I have a car, but it's one of the things I wanted to help. Being a vet learning about, you know, PTSD, knowing about it, living it, especially the phone calls I had to make to change the command when, you know, that eventually happened, unfortunately. And it's like, I want to do something. When the founder, um, Becky, uh, talked to me about how they were doing vets and first responders, I want to be part of it. And I knew that this was the right club for me. I'm so excited. Uh, to help you guys get sit down with you guys and i'm looking forward to seeing what we could raise and we'll, we'll do our hey, best to get little bit helps. exactly right uh, i'm excited to be part of this i know illinois commander is as well um and i appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day coming out they love it 
<laughs> this is great for them to get out. I know. Uh, he came around. He was like, oh, you know what? I'm going to wait to the interview. I'm just going to go look. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, after we get through this, I'm going to throw some food down their throats, and then they can do whatever they want. There we go. I think a good day to me. But I want to appreciate everybody for coming. Thank you for your time. Stay as long as you want. Take photos of the cars if you want. We'll let you in them, and I uh, appreciate your service. You know, from one brother to the next. And from Illinois Camaro, thank you for your service. And I'm, I'm excited, and we are excited. Mainly not me, so I should say we are excited to actually be participating in this. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you for coming, guys. All right.